Today on the Cool Stuff Guys Like channel, I'm going to show you how I modified this old Husqvarna chainsaw to take it from a pretty mild-mannered, everyday chainsaw to a completely insane animal. And when I show you the before and after video of this cutting the same log, I think you'll agree with me that these upgrades were honestly beyond what I could have ever even imagined that this saw was capable of. So this is a Husqvarna Model 257. They made a ton of these in the 1990s. And what's unique about it is that it shares the same chassis and crankshaft and stroke as the Husqvarna 262 XP. And the 262 XP is a lot better, you know, more powerful. Saw it's got about 4.8 horsepower versus 3.7 horsepower. So right there, you know, knowing that you can kind of convert this relatively easily, you can gain about 30%. So that's exactly what I did. I bought an OEM Husqvarna cylinder, a used one, but it was in really, really good shape. The, the cylinder wall looked great. That was about $90. Um, you can get aftermarket ones for about a third of that price, but frankly, if you're gonna keep your saw, I would definitely recommend trying to get OEM. And then the piston and rings that I got, it's a brand called Meteor. And most people will agree they're one of the best aftermarket brands you can get for pistons for these little chainsaws. And I used a um, Kaber brand ring. Uh, when I put the ring in, I made sure I gapped it right to about seven thousandths of an inch gap. That's going to be pretty important because these saws have only one piston ring. So you're really relying on that ring to seal. If the gap's too big, you're not gonna get as much compression. If the gap's too small, it's gonna kind of bind up and it could, it could blow the, the engine up. But I did a lot more than just that. Um, a lot of people port and polish their saws. What people say about the 262 XP though is it's already basically a factory hot rod. 4.8 horsepower out of a 62cc saw is pretty rowdy already, but usually people can do a little bit of porting and that is what I did. So if I look at what I ultimately ended up settling on is I raised the exhaust port about 40 thousandths of an inch. Uh, I also widened the exhaust port by about 60 thousandths of an inch. I wanna make sure I don't widen the exhaust port far enough that I'm getting too close to the edge of the piston skirt. Um, I also polished up the exhaust so it was nice and shiny. I did all this with an old Dremel tool that I have that has one of those um, extensions so you can kind of get in there pretty good. And it really did not take long. It doesn't take much because you're working with aluminum and it's obviously a pretty soft metal. The intake side of things, I didn't really get too crazy. I basically in the casting, there's some pretty aggressive bumps where they tapped the holes for the um, for the carburetor and the intake manifold. I cleaned those bumps off for the most part. It seemed like I still had enough wall thickness there that I wasn't going to get into the threads. Uh, and then I took off 30 thousandths all the way around on the intake. And then I also left the intake rough. Um, a lot of people say, you should leave your intake rough because if you polish it too much, the, the gas will kind of stick to the wall. You don't really want that to happen. So something almost everybody does when they rebuild a saw like this is they measure the squish band, it's called. So if you put a little piece of solder on the edge of the piston, just put a little grease and stick a little piece of solder, turn the engine over until it squishes the solder, turn it a couple times, make sure it's reliably squished and then measure it. Well, you want to see a number somewhere around 20 thousandths of an inch. If you go much higher than that, um, a lot of these saws from the factory are like 40 thousandths or more. You'll just be kind of giving away compression. You won't have as high of compression. If you go too much lower than that, what can happen is the piston can slap the top of the, the cylinder head. So you don't want to do that. What I was able to do though is I couldn't delete the gasket altogether to optimize my squish band, but I was able to use a beer can, which was about five thousandths of an inch thick, and that gave me a squish band measurement of about 
21 thousandths of an inch. That's a pretty good place to be. That makes me feel pretty safe, but also got really strong compression. I measured the compression at about 170 PSI after rebuilding, and I'm still not even really broken yet, so it may even go up a little bit from there. A lot of people do what's called a muffler mod on these types of saws, and I did that as well. One difference from the 257 Husqvarna to the 262 XP is the, the 262 has a little bit more of a free flowing muffler. It's basically just a hollow box in there. There was no baffles in there. So the port to atmosphere on the exhaust, I about doubled the size of it. Um, it was a circle hole, pretty small. I made it a pretty big oval. Maybe not quite as big as the exhaust port, but um, it, it's going to at least flow twice as much air, I'm sure of it. Um, whether it really needs to, probably doesn't need to be quite that big. I saved a lot of money by, I mentioned I used a beer can as the base gasket. I used, it's called Moto Seal, I believe, as just a thin, thin, thin layer of that on both sides of that gasket. I also saved a little money by making my own intake gaskets. I just had a, a sheet of gasket sealer that I used for some of these lawnmower projects behind me where there's some hard to find gaskets. So I just made my own and then I could be sure that I, you know, custom trimmed that inside of that gasket so that there's no overhang on the, uh, the intake side of things. On the muffler, I mentioned that I opened up the exhaust port. I also matched the, um, the side that mates with the cylinder. I matched that to the exhaust port just to make sure everything is nice and free flowing. And then probably the other pretty aggressive improvement that I made is I advanced the timing on this saw. So you do that by, uh, there's a little key that's cast into the flywheel. I just filed that key about a third of that key off and turned it clockwise when I put it on and then tightened it down while I had it turned clockwise. And I got about, from the best of my measurements, I think I got about six degrees of timing advance. So that's going to just make that spark fire just a little bit earlier when that piston's going up. I didn't do any modification to the transfer ports. Um, I think they're just pretty good from the factory. A lot of people will, but I also think to some extent less is more when you're doing a porting on this type of a saw that's already pretty pretty spicy from the factory. I think if you went a little too far, you could easily end up in a situation where you're actually making less power because it's just no longer optimized. So to round out the little items that you're going to need to buy if you're going to kind of complete the saw and do this, this conversion slash modification, that I've done is you're gonna need what's called the intake insulator. I'd call it the intake manifold from a 262 XP. And the only reason you need, you need a different one from the 257 is because the pulse hole for the little diaphragm pump in the carburetor is located in a different spot on the, on the cylinder. And you're also gonna need an intake sealing collar it's called that's different on the 257 versus the 262 xp um if i until i bought the correct sealing collar i kind of had it rigged up with some weather strip but you really want that nice perfect seal uh, it's going to help the air injection which is husqvarna super awesome you know air filtration setup it's going to help that work better it's all going to also going to help the saw cool better because you want to make sure that air it's flowing right around those fins um, for the cooling from the flywheel little fan thing on it. So you could pretty much stop it at that and keep your same 257 top cover. It kind of works. The air filter kind of bumps into it a little bit. You have to put a couple washers under the carburetor to make it work. But what I ultimately ended up doing, well, first I'll say I ran it like that for a while and it ran awesome. But I did find a top cover on eBay. It's a little beat up, but a lot less beat up than the one that I had for um, $25, including shipping. So I bought the top cover, and then there's something called an air filter holder that connects that to the carburetor. You kind of have this much, you know, nicer top cover uh, where you can just pop the 
the top off and get to the air filter and get to the um, spark plug. So I like that a lot better and for the price I couldn't beat it. It's a little beat up but a lot better than what I had on here that was a lot beat up. So that worked out great. Now let's go through exactly how much this cost and and then we'll show some some side by sides and you can really see how rowdy this saw is. So the the cylinder was $90, piston and ring $37. I ended up putting new crank seals in it because you might as well if you're already in there. You definitely don't want a crank leak on a two-stroke. That was five bucks. Um, the intake insulator, 24 bucks, and the intake sealing collar, 14 bucks. So to do this at the bare basics with OEM, all OEM parts is about $170. If you did it with aftermarket parts, it'd probably easily be half that price. When I add the new top, well, the used top cover to it and the, um, what they call the air filter adapter, that's another 50 bucks about in my case, um, cause I did find a pretty good deal on that. So all said and done, I'm into this for about 220 bucks. It's a, it's maybe a lot, but this saw is so awesome. I would do it again in a heartbeat if I had another 257 laying around. I might not say that you would want to go buy a 257 and do the conversion because you could probably buy a 262 XP for maybe less than the price difference between those two saws, but it, you know, it's awesome. So let's go ahead and I'll show you the um, side by side and just some cutting with this saw after I modified it. I'll mention in the before and after I'm using in both cases a brand new Husqvarna chain. I swapped the chain after break-in on the, the modified saw. So in both cases it's a fresh brand new chain. It's basically apples to apples and I'm cutting um, a piece of pretty dry super hard oak that is mm, I mean in some of these cuts I was using that full 20 inch bar length and you can you can judge for yourself
guys think? Was this worth it to do this? Um, or did I kind of throw my money away and I should have bought some kind of brand new saw? I'll let you guys decide, but I know what, what my answer is. Thanks for watching.